Hi, I'm Dr. David Smotridge. I'm the founder and medical director of La Jolla IVF. I'm going to talk to you about how we like to evaluate an egg donor. We are fortunate to work with many different agencies and when an egg donor comes in for evaluation, we do the following evaluation. An egg donor by definition generally is a woman who is under 30. If you choose a donor who's been a donor before, you have a proven track record on how well she did in terms of medications she used, number of eggs that she gave, number of embryos that were given, a pregnancy that occurred, number of embryos that were able to be frozen. If you choose a new donor, there is no background uh, available to be able to tell you exactly how she will respond. Regardless of which woman you choose, we have to do a very thorough evaluation to make sure that she's indeed a good candidate for you as an egg donor. We have the patient come in, we go through her health history, and we focus on her family health history because as an egg donor, you're going to be using her family genetics. We want to make sure that she ha does not carry any single gene disorders. So we do blood testing to look for single gene disorders, and we review about 100 different single gene disorders, common disorders that are in the Caucasian population, cystic fibrosis, Tay-Sachs, as well as Fragile X and SMA, which happens to be a spinal injury issue. In the Asian and Chinese population, we look for specifically for thalassemias, as well as hereditary blindness and hereditary deafness. We actually test every woman for over a hundred single gene disorders, regardless of what her ethnicity is, because sometimes it's not 100% clear if a woman is indeed 100% Caucasian or 100% Chinese. So we check all of these for all of the egg donors that we see. In addition to this testing, we do a full karyotype, which is her chromosomal evaluation to make sure that she does not have any abnormal chromosomes to pass on to the next generation. In 2005, the United States federal government got involved in all cases with regards to egg donors. And in their egg donor screening, there's a specific history and physical exam that is done on initial evaluation, as well as the following blood and urine testing for HIV, hepatitis B and C, HTLV1, syphilis, gonorrhea, West Nile virus, cytomegalovirus. In addition to that testing, and I mentioned about the, the single gene disorder testing and the karyotype uh, testing. We also do her blood type and we do a urine drug screen for her to make sure that she does not do drugs, alcohol or tobacco or tobacco breakdown products. That's the initial screening. We also do ovarian reserve testing, which is done by vaginal ultrasound to see how many follicles the woman has on each ovary. A follicle is a fluid-filled structure that has the potential to become an egg. A nice number of follicles for an egg donor generally is 15 or more. When women have fewer follicles, then we believe that their ovarian reserve is going to be decreased. And sometimes we see this even in a young, healthy woman. And so the concern there is if, if she only has, for example, four resting follicles, then perhaps she'll only make four eggs, which will not be a optimized yield for a patient as an egg donor. In addition to the ovarian reserve ultrasound testing, we do ovarian reserve blood work in the form of FSH level as well as AMH level or anti-mullerian hormone levels, which are the gold standard tests for ovarian reserve.